Okay, so we want to look at the bell curve now and analyze where the mean, median, and mode are for a curve like the bell curve that's symmetric. So we're starting with the bell curve first, and we see that the curve is perfectly symmetric, meaning that each side is a mirror image of the other side. And we see that the mean, the median, and mode are in the same place. Remember, the mode is the most repeated value, so it's where the highest peak in the curve occurs. Then you have the mean, and that's the balancing point, where you'd have to stick your finger to balance the weight of this distribution. Of course, it's symmetric, so we'd put it right in the middle, and it would keep it from tipping over. And in the case of the median, it's the number, literally, in the middle of the data set, so that half the values are above, half the values are below. So it makes sense that for this curve, these guys are all in the same place. What I want to look at next is what happens when a data set has some you know, extreme values either on one side of the curve or the other. And let's see what it does to the actual curve after that. So the first one I'm going to do is a scenario where you have some large values on one side of the curve. Not many of them, but still some large values on one side of the curve. So what I've drawn here is a skinny tail kind of extending off of the curve. This would represent, you know, say if we're looking at income data, this would be like all the billionaires in the world. You know, There aren't a lot of them, that's why it's not very tall here. There aren't tons of them like there are regular people, but they're values are so large, their incomes are so large, or their personal wealth is so large that it has an effect on the curve itself. And what's going to happen is when you look at the results over here, you're going to see that certain things change. The peak is here, and so we would label that as the mode. I think that's clear that that would be where the mode occurs. But the average, that guy is going to get tugged on by these numbers down here. Just like if you know, I gave a test and some uh, you know five people in the class get perfect 100s on the exam. Of course, the average is going to move up, right? They're going to increase the average. Even if everyone else did normal, those five people with perfect 100s are going to raise the average. It's the same thing here. These high numbers are going to drag on the average, pull it towards the tail. This is called the tail of the distribution. So we're going to see that the average is going to move. Now I've kind of exaggerated it out because I need some space, but the idea is that the mean or the average gets shifted to the right to correspond with this tail. The number that doesn't move that much is the median. The median tends to stay put. It's a little more robust. It doesn't move as easily. So the median will tend to be in the middle of these two values. So the mode is always where the bump is. The mean is always towards the tail, the extreme values, but the median isn't as affected by these guys. The reason why is because it's just the number in the middle. So it doesn't really matter what these numbers at the end are. If they were here, as long as they're above the median, they're still going to leave this number in the middle. If you said extend them out to here, the median doesn't care. As long as they're above it, nothing changes. The mean, however, is very effective because it has to add that into its total before you divide to get the average. So the mean is always tugged towards that. This distribution is called right skewed. Right skewed. And the reason why you want to remember right skewed is that it goes with the tail. Where the skinny tail is, that's where we get the name from, so right skewed. And it also means the mean will shift to the right. All right, now another possibility is that the curve is not right skewed, but left skewed. A left skewed curve has a skinny tail on the left hand side, and that means that there are some very low values down here. And those low values drag down the average. So these low values are going to pull on the average to pull it away from where it was initially in the center. It's going to bring it towards that tail. So again, we'll tend to see that the mean is affected by that and moves to the left. We know that the mode will still be where the peak occurs. So I still have the mode in the center. And then finally, the last thing is the median. And the median is going to stay here between the middle of them, in the middle of the two. Okay, so same logic as the curve over here. These very low values pull on the mean. The mode is where the peak is. The median is not as affected, so it doesn't move all the way to the left like the mean does. And so uh, we call this guy left skewed. Left skewed. All right, so now um, we'll be able to look um, down the road with problems that involve this concept. So you kind of want to visualize these drawings in your brain and you should be able to realize when you see a data set when the mean is lower than the median it could mean that the data set is left skewed. When the mean is higher than the median it could mean that the, the distribution is right skewed. If they're all in the same place, the three measures, it's most likely symmetric. And by the way, of course, bell curves aren't the only symmetric curves, right? Um, there are plenty of other curves like the uniform distribution. It looks like a rectangle. And that distribution 
is also perfectly symmetric, and it has these three measures all in the center as well.